uh, as the slide says, uh, we use OpenJPA by default, but it's quite common for people to take that out and use Hibernate instead. That seems to be that seems to be particularly popular. Um, we've also used Eclipse Link, and that seems to work okay as well. Uh, we support transactions, and you, again, you don't need to be inside of EJB in order to take advantage of this. You can just simply inject a user transaction resource anywhere you want to in your application inside your service, managed screens, etc. And you can just call methods directly on that to start your transaction, commit, rollback, uh, however you like. Uh, we use ActiveMQ to provide JMS. Uh, by default, this listens on port 61616, so you can connect to it externally as well if you want to. We include Apache CXF inside the Tommy stack, so we can use web services. In order to create a web service to be used, we can either annotate a uh, normal POJO with the app web service annotation, or you can put that on session beam. When the application is deployed, that will be picked up automatically, some whistle will be published for you, and that web service will then be available to use. We also support uh, web service security inside Tommy as well. Uh, there's a number of different uh, examples that we've got showing various different security methods, so you can either apply a, kind of a simple HTTP basic authentication to a web service or you can use WS security and there's lots of different kinds of WS security we're using such as just passing the username and password in, in a header or we're using a, a client certificate. So there's, there's some examples in our, in our source code showing how to do that. Um, we can also reference a web service client as well just by using the app web service ref annotation as you can see here. You know, and a lot of neat thing about this is that if you've ever tried to use like Axis or CXF or anything like that inside Tomcat before, the amount of work that you have to do to get the security integrated is quite high because those things don't come free. Even though you can get a little bit of web services junk by dropping in CXF or Axis, to get web services security integrated on top of Tomcat security is a is a is a quite a bit of work. Um, and this works pretty seamlessly. So if you swap out the Realm, the Tomcat realm, say like for their database realm, all this security stuff works on top of that database realm. So if you add users to your database and things like that, they'll be usable with the, with the web service uh, security. And the EJB security and just any security will all work on top of the Tomcat security. So it's, it's a pretty good level of integration. You don't want to get it for free. Anytime someone might tell you, oh, we just plot in CXF and the Tomcat, that takes care of it. Well, then they're not using security. Or if they are, they're using a CXF specific security and it's not related to Tomcat security. They got to manage both. So it's pretty nicely integrated uh, in that aspect. And what, one of the nice things that we can do with Apache Tommy is we can hook up uh, an EJB client uh, somewhat differently from. Uh, other remote EJB clients, we can actually use HTTP as the protocol for communicating. So you can just create a remote client, point it at this URL here, or substitute in the IP address of the, of the remote system, and just start looking up your beams and, and calling methods. So it's pretty useful if you uh, don't want to open up another, another port on your firewall or anything like that. Right. Just one, one final slide. Uh, we've we've uh, also got an example that shows using the Maven T7MP plugin, which you can use to, to run Tomcat 7 and deploy applications to it and so forth. Yeah. You know, and that's the point that we're trying to make is that you know we're trying to be extremely minimalist about it to the point where we have you know we have an all-in-one bundle, but that's really kind of a convenience. Um, it's only saving you one step, though, <laughs> and that's dropping in the core file. Uh, you know, uh, so you really can pick whatever version of Tomcat you want. If you pick a version below seven, then you don't get the at servlet annotation support, but you still get all the other stuff that we offer. So you still get the JMS, you still get the JSON, uh, 
JPA is to do web services, is to do the security, security integration. So if you have a version of Tomcat 5.5 or higher, you're good to go. Uh, and for us to maintain the compatibility with those different versions is really just kind of like we have one class with, with a little bit of porting code in there for each of the different versions. Because sometimes they change a method, remove a method, and sometimes do things a little bit differently. But it's not really hard to support all those different uh, types of uh, versions. And a cool thing about the way we're doing our unit test, uh, our certification work with uh, on TC2 Cloud broken up like that is, you know, it only takes us an hour to get results for one version of Tomcat. So, you know, on release, we certify, you know, a couple of versions of each major. We don't certify, we can't, we can't officially certify anything below Tomcat 7 because of the lack of uh, certain annotations, but we test. Um, all those different versions. So, you know, it's it's pretty nice. I mean, we, we don't just kick something out there and go, it should work with Tomcat 5. And we actually run tests against Tomcat 5, 5, run tests against Tomcat 6, run tests against 7, and then we kick out a release. So, so it's a pretty good process we have. Um, and the result is something that is perfect for Tomcat users who don't like the bloat of an app server. I mean, that's part of the reasons, one of the reasons why you know, if someone wants to do something more complicated in integration, we just say no, because if you want to do that, you can use one of the other servers. If people wanted that, they would use one of the other servers. If they want just real small and minimal, you know, that's what they're going to use Tommy for. If they like Tomcat and they just want a bit extra, they want to make any compromises, then that's what we're trying to do, you know. Um, so it's, it's pretty small and it's pretty light, and, it, and uh, like like I say, if you're going to take Tomcat and do the bare minimum required to add in things you want, you end up with Tomcat. So, uh, if you are using Tomcat and you are using just a little bit more, like people, people a lot of times they're running web apps and say, well, I'm just using Tomcat, if you're using J, and we only use serverless. Uh, oftentimes what they really mean is, we're only using Tomcat and we're adding some things in ourselves, and that's what we're using. And they're doing that extra work because they don't like the line that's typically crossed when they go to an app server. And this is designed to stay firmly under that line. So it's, it's, you know, it's real bare bones and minimal. Are there any questions? Yes, try to propose that. Uh, my first question is like, it's excellent. Uh, uh, using the OpenAGB, OpenDPA, is a link uh, and difference to uh, me, but is it possible to use the web reference implementation of Java IE 6 and drop it into Tommy and get it working? Or we have to do a fair bit of configuration to get it working? You mean uh, an application that runs on Glassfish? To yes. Yeah, and actually, uh, we actually support the Glassfish component descriptors. Mm -hmm. um, and we did that primarily because we're lazy. Uh, the TCK, the, the web profile certification uh, suite, comes with the Glassfish descriptors. And so we figure how to write identical versions of all those descriptors or just support them. So we just wrote a little layer that reads them in, translates them into our stuff, and then just run. So we're actually using Glassfish descriptors when we're doing our certification work. So to drop in a Glassfish app that uses Glassfish descriptors is pretty straightforward. Uh, it should work just right out of the, out of the gate. Um, and uh, just on a similar note that, you know, OpenJV in terms of its life uh, primarily is used as an embedded uh, testing framework. And early on, most of the users were JBoss or Glassfish users. And so we did a lot of work uh, to try and mimic those environments and keep things consistent. It means uh, when I was uh, thinking like when we're building against the Glassfish, we just say that uh, Java 6 EE web and most of the API, this is basically being as provided as a big dependency and nothing is being copied into the web and uh, directory of the project. And just take that one and we know that we have only dependency to this one composite job. Right. And yeah. we basically say, okay, this is being right hand dependent. You don't need to add libraries to it. Okay. You don't need to change it. Um, and that's what, you know, so this integration has existed for a while. That's one of the reasons we're with EE6 as a web profile and it was like a dream come true for us to have a web profile exist because we never wanted to go to the full thing, right? Uh, but as a penalty of that, people didn't understand what it was really all about. So when I say it's 
web profile, what I mean is identical web profile. So if your web app works in Glassfish and it's compliant, it will move over. You don't have to add jars or move jars to get it to work. That means I was thinking like uh, uh, I'm using the Jersey implementation for the JXRS. Yeah. So it wouldn't it be possible to do that where I have to copy the JXRS implementation to get it? Uh, yeah. Well, the, the, the Jersey library is part of uh, Glassfish itself, right? Yes. Yeah. So you know when you move things over, you got to use the implementations uh, that the platform uses. So we have a CXF integration. Um, and if you wanted to swap CXF up for, for, for Jersey, that would be an integration level task. It wouldn't be an application level task. Um, other things are easier to swap up because they're supported APIs, like JPA. There's an API for plugging JPA, JPA into an app server. There's a swap up, open JPA for Eclipse or Hydrate, and that is actually swapping a jar. Um, and that's the swapping a jar inside the tongue that server lib or whatever. Uh, but to do a Jersey type of thing, you know, that, that requires a lot of integration work. Uh, my, second question, like yeah, my second question was, uh, like the deploying the database uh, GDBC drivers into the server lib, yeah. is it possible like, not to have server-specific resources that have application-specific resources that application will be deployed? Those uh, are being created on the fly and then be deleted when it's deployed. Yeah, you, you mean you want uh, uh, a data source to find inside the application. Yes. Yeah, there's an annotation in EP6 that is usable as well. Um, and that's an at data source definition annotation. And you put that in your application uh, as part of the EP6 web profile. And the other thing, you use the JPA, uh, Open JPA, basically, uh, for that. Uh, what's the recommendation? Do you use Open JPA? Use the JPA interfaces with Hibernate or Eclipse Link? Any some sort of like uh, recommendation? Um, you know, Hibernate tends to be easy to unit test with, but it, but OpenJPA tends to perform better at runtime. What my personal findings are about Hibernate is like when you use it from the JPA interfaces, and when you are basically updating an object which has a collection to it, mm -hmm. basically the whole collection has been read and then been reserialized to the database, which basically can be a very performance impact sure. for this thing. It behaves accordingly onto the Eclipse thing, but it should be doing that. It behaves uh, fine with OpenJPA as well. They both work the same way, but Hibernate is basically some odd thingy, mm -hmm. and we basically just it to the Jira level, but they basically. Yeah, I mean, we, we, we at Labs don't uh, work on Hibernate, uh, so I wouldn't be able to help with that. But, but uh, absolutely, if you, know, if you don't want to use Hibernate, we don't ship with Hibernate anyway. Yeah. Uh, and so you could just continue to use OpenJPA and you didn't want to put some huge job in as well. Uh, you have any questions? The, about the connection pool, the database connection pool. Yep. So uh, it's taken care of by the uh, Tommy. Right, we use the transaction, uh, the timeout, everything. Yeah, actually, uh, we modified Kong's, uh, we included <coughs> some code to Kong's DBCP uh, database connection pool uh, to the Apache library. And it previously, it supported database pooling, but that's not enough to do real database pooling that's transactional. To do a database pooling that's transactional, you've got to be able to pull the connection out of the pool and return it when the transaction is finished. And, uh, and so uh, we contributed that uh, functionality back to Commons DBCP, and we use Commons DBCP internally inside of Tommy. And so all the, uh, all the transactional based connection now works fine uh, and, and uh, it works pretty great. That, that, that was actually